We are pleased to present this EUS Masterclass on Vascular Interventions, a novel indication for EUS that is gaining increasing popularity. Although there are several reports on vascular applications of EUS, the three most commonly encountered scenarios include tissue acquisition via intervening vasculature or tissue acquisition of the mass within the vasculature such as tumor thrombi, measurement of portal pressure gradient, and finally, obliteration of large gastric varices, either electively or emergently. In this section, we will outline how to perform tissue acquisition via normal intervening vasculature, a scenario occasionally encountered in clinical practice. When sampling a lesion where the intervening vasculature is normal, it is essential to exclude the use of antiplatelet agents other than aspirin and anticoagulants. An FNA and not FNB needle should be used, preferably 25 gauge in size. When sampling a suspected tumor thrombus within the vasculature, a 22 gauge FMB needle can be used, ensuring that only the thick wall of the vessel is sampled. This is one of those occasions where access to rapid on-site assessment is invaluable so that the number of needle passes can be minimized. In patients with an intervening normal pancreatic duct, one should also consider an intra-procedural administration of rectal endomethacin as prophylaxis for pancreatitis. Finally, it is important to ensure that the information obtained impacts patient management. This 57-year-old female with abdominal pain presented with a 15mm sized mass in the pancreatic neck region noted on CT scan. At EUS, a 15mm solid mass was seen posterior to the portal vein with no clear window for tissue acquisition. A 25 gauge expect FNA needle was positioned at the interface between the stomach wall and the portal vein ensuring minimal distance between the target and the needle with a technician bracing the scope out the mouth of the patient to prevent recoil, and after applying suction so that the scope is closely approximated with a gastric wall, a rapid thrust is made to advance the needle via the intervening portal vein and into the mass. The needle is then fanned gently within the mass, and a rapid on-site evaluation was performed. which showed a new endocrine tumour. A second pass was then performed to procure specimen in cell block for ancillary studies. In a prior report from 10 years ago, we have reported on the safe performance of transaortic FNA via the esophagus in a patient with suspected tumour in the posterior mediastinum that was proven to be a metastatic neuroendocrine tumour. However, successful outcomes are strongly reliant on following the checklist outlined earlier. In the following section, we will be outlining the technique of sampling tumor thrombus in order to establish a tissue diagnosis. This 51-year-old male presented with obstructive jaundice and was shown to have a 2cm common hepatic duct stricture with involvement of the right main hepatic duct on MRCP. ERCP had failed at an outside hospital and therefore a percutaneous transhepatic biliary drain was placed and the patient was referred for tissue sampling and biliary decompression. At EUS, the wall of the portal vein at the level of the liver hilum was diffusely thickened and mimicked the appearance of a donut with central vascular flow and a thick outer rim. Using a 22-gauge Francine tip FNB needle, the thick wall was punctured and tissue was protured. Please note that the normal appearing wall of the portal vein is carefully avoided when tissue sampling is undertaken. A rapid on-site evaluation was then performed, which showed the lesion to be an adenocarcinoma. An ERCP was then performed for biliary decompression. The bar duct was first selectively cannulated. Then the guide wire was passed across the common hepatic duct and into the right main hepatic system. This was followed by placement of a 6mm by 8cm epic self-expanding metal stent for pleury decompression. Currently, hepatic vein pressure gradient is the gold standard for measuring portal pressures, as access to the portal vein is almost impossible for interventional radiologists. 
therefore in conditions with pre-sinusoidal or prehepatic portal hypertension such as PBC, PSC or malignancy, the hepatic vein pressure gradient can be misleading or inaccurate. However, at EUS, both the portal vein and the hepatic vein can be accessed successfully from the stomach with relative ease and the portal pressure gradient can be measured very accurately. Portal pressure gradient can be measured at EUS using a dedicated device from Cook Medical. The handheld manometer is attached to non-compliant tubing, which is then secured to the hub of the 25-gauge FNA needle that is primed with heparinized saline. To obtain accurate measurements, the procedure is done under general anesthesia with the patient in the supine position. The manometer is placed in the left mid-axillary line at the fourth intercostal space in the mid-axillary line where the right atrium is present. Prior to puncture, it is important to differentiate the mid-hepatic vein from the portal vein. The mid-hepatic vein is punctured at 2 cm where it joins the IVC. The mid-hepatic vein has a thin wall with four-phased pulse wave pattern versus a thick, hypercaric margin with uniform venous hum of the portal vein. After the vessel is punctured, one milliliter of heparinized saline is flushed, and once the air bubbles are visualized at EUS, the pressure readings are obtained. The average of three readings in the mid-hepatic vein and left portal vein are obtained, and the difference will be the portal pressure gradient. A value of 5 is the cutoff to determine the presence of portal hypertension. This 52-year-old female with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was referred for evaluation of suspected cirrhosis. At EUS, the mid-hepatic vein, with its characteristic thin anechoic walls, was identified as it joined the inferior vena cava. Pulse wave Doppler revealed the four-phase pattern classic for hepatic vein. The vessel was punctured, and after infusion of one milliliter of saline, three pressure measurements were obtained, and the average reading in this patient was measured as 15 millimeters of mercury. The needle was slowly withdrawn, and the portal vein was identified by its characteristic thick wall and continuous vascular flow. The portal vein was punctured and the average of three readings was obtained to be 28 mm of mercury. As the pressure gradient was 13 mm of mercury, the patient was diagnosed to have portal hypertension. Subsequently, a liver biopsy was performed at the request of the hepatologist in the same setting for assessment of disease activity. In this section, we will outline the concept and technique of EUS-guided variceal obliteration. Although not proven in randomized trials, it has been suggested that the combination of EUS-guided coil placement and glue injection is superior to endoscopic glue injection alone. We recommend general anesthesia for variceal obliteration as brisk bleeding will require intubation of the patient. After aspirating air, we recommend water infusion into the gastric fundus to obtain good acoustic coupling. A coil size greater than 20% of the size of the vascular lumen may be considered, while coils 10mm or smaller can be advanced via 22-gauge FNA needles. Larger sized coils will require 19-gauge needles. It is important to note that histoacryl polymerizes very rapidly, so the substance must be injected quickly and only water should be used for flushing the needle, as saline can accelerate polymerization and needle clogging. Lipiodol can be used with histoacryl to delay rapid polymerization, but overdilution must be avoided. Although Demobond polymerizes slowly, rapid injection must be avoided as it carries the risk of distant embolization. It is important to demonstrate the absence of vascular flow at conclusion of the procedure. If needed, additional treatment should be delivered until there is a lack of flow. Also, if the varix is hard on palpation, it is reasonable to assume that obliteration has occurred. In order to avoid damage to the working channel, we also recommend that the needle be withdrawn into the sheath and then the sheath extended 2 cm outside of the echoendoscope. The entire echoendoscope can then be removed outside of the patient. This 73-year-old patient with large fundic gastric varices was referred for endoscopic treatment. After administration of water into the stomach and obtaining good acoustic coupling, the varix was punctured using a 19-gauge FNA needle and two coils were placed in quick succession, followed by injection of one milliliter of cyanoacrylate.
adequate obliteration was observed on vascular flow post-treatment. As the presence of vascular flow was observed in an adjoining vessel, additional treatment was undertaken. On follow-up, the gastric varices had obliterated sufficiently as observed. Given these promising preliminary observations, new vascular applications may be possible in the near future. As circulating tumor cells have been found more frequently and in higher numbers in the portal vein than in the peripheral circulation, also in sufficient quantity for proteomic and genomic profiling in pancreatic obliterate cancer, portal vein blood sampling holds great promise in the near future. Additionally, Selective embolization of the right portal vein to induce left hepatic lobe hypertrophy, right right hepatectomy, transarterial microbead injection into the hepatic artery in liver metastasis, and EUS guided intrahepatic portosystemic chance for complications of portal hypertension appear to hold promise in the distant future. To learn more about EUS guided vascular interventions, please read the fifth edition of our textbook, Endosonography. And if you want to observe and learn evidence-based practices and know more about state-of-the-art EUS technologies, please attend Florida Live EUS from August 17th to 19th, 2023 in Orlando, Florida, where advanced interventions will be performed by internationally reputed faculty from around the world. Please join us at Florida Live, where the magic of endoscopy begins.